Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. And today I'm coming to you from the home of movie machines. As you can see from a quick look around here, this is a full on Hollywood picture car company. Some of the cars you see in the background are things they've built. Some are cars that they've bought from other productions. But today, what we're gonna get into, a lot of you guys have been asking for more Mopar. So with a little noise going on in the background, what we're shooting today, that's right, right there behind me, that's the GTX from Fast 8. Super stoked to be shooting this car. Now I tell you, this car is not street legal. So like the ice charger we shot before, we're not allowed to actually drive this anywhere. We got to keep all within this block here. But this is the friggin' GTX from Fast 8. This is going to be a blast. So hold on, man, because here we go. All right, you guys, so we're gonna do a little walkthrough on this GTX that we all know from Fast 8. Now I'll tell you a couple things up front. Remember, I might say it a couple times throughout this, it's a picture car. Picture cars are designed to get the shot, to make it look great. They don't care about fit and finish. They don't have the time or energy or budget to deal with fit and finish, especially when you're building multiples of one car. You got some that are designed for just interior shots with the star with a green screen background. You got some that are stunt cars. You got some that are like this, that are a hero car of a sort, which is it's a close up shot. It's one of the better looking ones. So let's walk through some of this car. Starts life, it's a 71 Roadrunner converted to a GTX. What's cool about this car is it's a little different than most picture cars, is that it actually does have a 383 motor in it. Typically this would be an LS or a small block 350 or something of that sort. Something super reliable, bank on it. Who cares that it doesn't match the car? Get the shot, get the scene done, move on. One thing they always do with anything that's gonna do any amount of stunt driving at all, this car is fully caged including supports underneath the hood. You'll notice a bunch of tube chassis going on there. Again, just in case this car is gonna get driven hard at all, they wanna protect the stunt driver. This car actually does have some brakes, not a lot, it's manual brakes. I noticed it's four piston all around, so we don't have a ton of brake, but it gets the job done, of course. One of the things that really catches your eye when you're looking at this car, especially a rear view, is just how massive the rear tire is. It's a Mickey Thompson, 29 by 15 on a 20 inch rim. I'm pretty sure what that means, the 15 is the width from tread to tread, not the entire tire width, just from tread to tread. If I'm wrong, somebody please correct me on that. But some of the styling cues on this car are just cool. And again, you gotta think back to how it played in the movie. If you didn't see the movie, this car might not be attractive to you. But when you see how it played in the movie, it's a monster power car in the movie. In the real world, I don't know that this car is making 400 horsepower the way it's set up currently. It does have a four nine inch rear end, which is cool. It does have a four link suspension in the rear, again, which is cool. I also noticed as I was crawling around here, it's got ride tech, fully adjustable shocks. Uh, again, depending on what kind of driving it's gonna have to go through, they, they need room to play a little bit. Under the hood, other than the 383, I noticed it's got headers. Bob, who's caretaking the car right now for my friends, Chrome Cars, who purchased this thing recently, he said he thinks it's got a mild build to the motor, didn't really know what. Paul noted that it's possibly the smallest air cleaner either one of us have ever seen on a car, other than maybe a single Weber, right? Never seen a single Weber. Well, you don't ever see a single yeah. Weber. <laughs> so the nitrous bottle on this car is not a functioning nitrous bottle. It's a movie gag. It's got it. You got to have it. I mean, especially with Dom, he's got to be able to pull a wheelie, right? This car, I didn't really give it a shot, but something tells me it's not going to do a wheelie. But then again, I'm not Dominic Toretto. Some other touches that are, you know, fitting of the car, fitting of the look of the car is the race gauges, pretty basic auto meter stuff, but looks great. Rear seat delete, of course, with all the sheet metal back here, very kind of industrial race looking, like as if Dom whipped this car together in his garage, you know. Pretty basic, but not a boring steering wheel. I mean, it's a very race looking, you know, the Grant steering wheel. The shifter is one of those that always stands out to me because you'll never see this shifter in any other car in the world that I can personally think of. I've never seen this in a custom car, but every picture car I've ever gotten into, 
every single picture car I can think of, and I've been in probably 10 or 15 picture cars, that's what they get every single time. It's reliable, it's safe, it locks into gear, it's not going anywhere, you throw it into reverse, it's gonna stay in reverse until you manually get out of there. You're not gonna accidentally knock it. A lot of what they do when they're building picture cars is you gotta get the look of the car right, you gotta get the stance, the feel, all that stuff. But there's no time for fit and finish. The paint on this car, if you look at it closely, you're gonna say it's atrocious, of course it is. But from 15 feet away, moving, smoking tires, doing wheelies, all the stuff that'll happen in the movie, it looks great. The wheels look right on it. The stance on this car is just killer. It's set up just how it should be. And again, how it plays in the movie is important. And this car played a really cool scene in the movie. I think it's extraordinary what they did with this car. All right, you guys, so we're inside the GTX or Roadrunner, depending on how you want to look at it. It's actually a Roadrunner marked GTX. You can actually see on the dash, it says Roadrunner here. So this car has, like most picture cars, an interesting startup procedure. We got key on where nothing at all happens. We got a hidden switch down here that powers the car. And then we've got a push button start. And the car's alive. And this is actually, believe it or not, you guys, this is kind of a nice picture car. I say that like seriously, because I've seen some of them that are just, you get in the interior and they're really ratty. This is fairly ratty, right? Let's, let's also get rid of this, because this is picture car stuff. This is not functioning NOS. This car doesn't have it. By the way, anyone that sees the movies where the NOS kicks on and the guys fly back and everything gets blurry, not so much. All right, so this shifter is atypical on every picture car you ever see. Wait, this battery kill isn't part of the startup process? Not anymore, this is old. This is old battery kill. Now they've converted it to a switch under the dash here. This is an atypical Dennis McCarthy thing. This is on every picture car that Dennis's company, Vehicle Effects, builds. So is this Trans, every single one of these. What's kind of fun about this car is, again, with picture cars, Dennis is known for, with any of us that know Dennis, we know what he's gonna use for a motor is an LS3 in almost everything. Why? Because after that show and they're on to the next one, it's like Legos. They pull the motor, pop it in another car, and they always know it's going to be reliable, it's going to function well, uh, and it's inexpensive, you know? So this car is not street legal, so all we get to do is drive it very slowly like I'm doing right now, right here in the neighborhood. We can't go more than about a block, and that's our limitation as far as driving the car goes. But this is one of, now how many were made for Fast 8? I gotta be honest, I don't know how many stunt cars they did, how many hero cars they did. Wow, these are very much manual brakes and not a lot of them. It's, it's uh, if you guys remember correctly, this is the car that uh, in the New York scene, which was actually in Cleveland, pulls all the cars all over the place. And you know, of course Dom gets away because he's Dom, you he got to, right? That is the extent of our drive, isn't it, dude? <laughs> Honest question to all you guys that are actually still here watching with us. If you were told you could drive the GTX from Fast 8, but you could only drive it about the length of most of a football field, how many of you would jump at the chance? I'm guessing 100% of them, pretty much, yeah, you know? Pretty oh, you, you're trying to nail this thing, huh? Yeah, let's give it... Let's see what it does. Let's feel what it does. <laughs> no, it's I'm not going to push on it. I'm nervous, man. I don't know. Yeah. It's a picture car. It made it through its scene. Yeah. It was done. After that, it's a picture car. All right, you guys. That's it for the Fast and Furious 8 GTX. The Dom car that tears apart New York City, man. I love this car. I love the look of it. The stance is right. It's very sinister, very gangster looking. And it really looks like what it plays as, like as if he built it in the garage over a couple of days and then went out and really tore up New York City in it. And it was nice to see it go to something else other than another Charger or another Roadrunner. 
that they put Dom in a, in a newer GTX, which is just a cool one. Anyways, man, always fun to shoot one of these picture cars because they're, they're, they're things that we've seen. Like I've seen this car in the movie and now I'm, I was sitting in it, driving it, albeit 150 feet. I got to drive this thing back and forth. Very cool. Hope you guys had a good time in this episode. I know a bunch of you guys have been asking for more Mopar. Here's one and trust me, we got a lot more coming. So hope you guys enjoyed it today. Thanks for hanging and watching. Truly do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next episode. All right, man, later.